Hello, my name is Rainer Hanekamp. I'm a trainer and consultant at Angular Architects. And this is a video about the create feature method in NGRX. Actually, the create feature method has already been introduced in June with version 12.1, but I was not aware of it unless until I read a very good article about it. And since I thought I might not be the only one who doesn't know it, and because it is a very handy feature, I decided to make a video about it. So the create feature method removes the boilerplate code in NGRX in two areas. The first one is that it removes the necessity of having a variable that contains the feature name. This might not, might not be a revolutionary change, and nevertheless, it's, it's definitely something, but the second one is really good. Because it, at the same time, it also automatically generates all the selectors that we have, and we only need to pick those that we really require. And the way how it does this is just wonderful. It just shows us what we can achieve these days with modern TypeScript. Let's start. So we have here a normal Angular module, which is using NGRX. We see here the store module for feature, and we have here this feature key and of course the reducer. So let's get going to the reducer. We see here that we need to store the customer feature key inside a variable. And this is something that we can improve now by using the create feature method. So what I'm going to do, that I say I have a new customer feature and I use the create feature method. Well, the first property of this configuration is the name and that is the feature name. So we have defined it here as customer with a capital case. And the second property would be the reducer. And here we just pass the create reducer function and we are more or less done with the first part. Yeah, so like that. I can then close the function. And of course, I also need to export that one. Now I can also remove here the custom feature key because it will not be needed anymore. That one as well. So I go back into my module and here I say, instead of passing the feature key and the reducer, I just say customer for feature, customer feature. That's everything that I require now. So that's the first part. As, as I said before, this is not a revolutionary change, but it's, it, it is definitely something. And now let's come to the selector that we see what this is really about. In my selector, uh, the way that this usually works is that I need to manually create the selectors for every property that I have in my state. So the larger, the bigger my state is, the more of these selector methods I need to create manually. Now, with this new create feature method, this changes. Because what the customer feature also provides is all the selectors from my state. So we see here, just automatically created. And if, for example, I would decide now that I want to add another property, then the right selector method will also be added immediately. So let's say um, not here, but here in the in my state, I have a new property which I call foobar, which is of, of type string. Of course, I need to initialize it, you know, something. And if I now go back to my selector, I immediately will see that there is a select foobar. Wonderful. So what I can do now, that I can remove all my manually created selector and just use the destructor functionality to fetch them out from my customer feature variable. 
So what I mean by that is that I say I oh, customer feature. I just type here or just pick the selectors that I want. In my case, I want the load status, the customers, actually all of them, because it's not it's not so much work anymore. So I say I want to have the load status. I also want to have the countries. I want to have the customer groups, and I want to have the has error and the select select the customer ID as well. Yep. And now I can remove all that code. It's not required anymore. And now about the derived selectors. In some cases, it's just uh, that I just don't actually or directly want to uh, export or expose a state, uh, state property. I want to do some calculations and processing. I want to expose or I want to select a derived state. Now, in this case, uh, we have two of them. The first one is select by ID. So we are getting from our components or from our services, we are getting passed an ID. And this selector will fetch the current customers and make sure if the customer is already there. And the other part is for the is loaded. Here again, we are the, the, the derived selector is based on the select load status property, and it is just checks. It just checks if the load status has the value loaded or not, and returns a boolean. Turns out that we don't need to do anything else. We leave the derived selectors as they are because they can still rely on the select customers. It's just a normal selector like everything else. And now for the export part, we see here that I say, well, from the outside, I only allow to directly select the customers or the load status. And of course, I'm also exporting the select by ID or the is loaded. Yo, yeah, that's it. There is nothing else to do. A very tiny feature, but with a potential huge improvement. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and see you next time. Goodbye.